Welcome to Better Golf, I'm Paul Dyer. And I'm Ian Holloway. And today we're going to go onto the golf course and we're going to show you two different ways to play a par five hole. So here we are at the 18th Golf Club Felbert and it's a par five. It's a really great hole for me as I normally draw the ball and it's a light dog leg to the left. First part is relatively flat and then it goes down relatively sharply down to the left. Well, unfortunately, and I don't hit it right to left, I hit it left to right. And this means that this hole's not really ideal. And obviously what we've seen on the, on the thing here is that you can get it going right to left and you could probably get it going quite a way down the hole mm -hmm. and you've got a chance <coughs> of getting on the green in two. Whereas, to be honest, the shape of the hole means that, that I'm never gonna get it down there somewhere. I'm, I'm gonna be over here. So, you know how people always say, you know, oh, why did I try a shot that I can't hit? Mm -hmm. You know, because I can hit a right to left shot, but not all that often, and there's out of bounds down the left here. People always say, I'm going to hit three seven irons, and I could have got on the green with no worries. But they never do. But they never do. So I'm going to try that. Yeah, I think that's really important, because when they play this hole, I've played this hole quite a few times, and as you go past around about 160 metres or around about 170, 175 yards, it goes very sharply downhill. And the majority of amateurs have a real problem then playing a shot with a long club from a downhill line. Whereas if they hit it around about 150 metres, they're going to be on the plateau at the top with a good view down to the layup area. I think that's really important for people to understand and plot their way around from the tee. Because these three bunkers here just short of the green, they start around about 75, 75 meters short of the green. And these are like really pot bunkers, they're really deep and they are definitely a penalty. You've got to really chip out to the side. And if you, if you kind of plot your way here with a seven iron or something that, with a five iron, six iron or whatever, and then plot your way down, the ball, because it's summertime here, is going to spring down and it's going to leave you with about 80, 90 meters there. All right. So. You're going to go for it, I'm, I'm going to lay it. up and we're going to see how we go. Exactly. Let's get it on. Okay, so normally I'd tee up um, more on the right side and, and hit a fade, but since we're only going to hit a 7-9, I might as well tee up on the left here. And then I'm hitting it pretty much into the middle, middle right side of the fairway. So if I'm going to hit my 7-9, I might as well make sure that I'm going to get it into a safe position. Safe. There we go, dead easy. Ian, you're up. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking the driver option. So, dog leg right to left. I'm going to tee the ball up definitely on the left side. I'm going to try and start it more in the middle of the fairway and turn it around the corner. So let's give it a go. Tee the ball relatively high. And that should be quite a long way down there. Okay, Paul, good shot. So you've hit seven iron off the tee and now you're in pretty much the perfect position. Uh, the bunker is looking around about 100, 175, 180 meters from here. So what's the plan? Yeah, I must say it felt a bit weird to hit seven iron off the tee of a par five, but now I actually stand here and I'm, I'm up on this plateau looking down into the fairway. There was no risk from the tee and um, from here the, the the flag's actually sort of back in the green there so i'm just going to lay up in front of the uh the right hand bunker that it all falls away to the left there so probably it'll just roll down somewhere in the middle of those two bunkers and i should be fine and again uh, i've got to say the, the, there's this sort of odd feeling of really not being under pressure and you, know, you could have a go at it with a wood for me and try and get it there but i can just imagine now now standing here with a seven iron you feel you feel nice and safe don't you mm -hmm. Let's have a go. Good shot. 
Yeah. So pretty much exactly what I wanted, so that's down there somewhere and I can have another, probably another one of these to the green. Okay, so a little bit left of centre with my drive, um, pretty good position. And I've got 195 metres to the flag and as you can see here it's a little bit downhill. And there's these three bunkers on the right hand side and to carry those, I've just measured it, I've got 173 metres over those bunkers. So downhill lie carry length there so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit a, a four iron I'm gonna hit it probably just to the right center of the green and with my normal shape hopefully it'll come towards the flag so a bit of a downhill lie so I might grip down a little bit but let's see what happens here So pretty good shot, I'm really pleased with that. Started right edge of the right edge of the green, a little bit of draw. Should have a putt for eagle. So I've got 88 metres left over, which to be honest, after hitting a seven iron twice, and I've still got a pretty simple pitch into the green where in the middle of the fairway and I've got an easy gap between the bunkers, there's nothing in the way. And to be honest, I'll probably do this, even if this doesn't get close enough to make birdie, I'll probably still do this the next time as well, because for me, it just seems the right way to play this hole with my left to right shape and the hole going right to left. So let's get a sand iron and have a go. So good shot, Paul. So the ball was a little bit kind of downhill, side hill lie. Did you do anything different in your setup there, Paul? Well, not not on purpose, but obviously you feel yourself sort of edging downhill a little bit yep. when, you, when you're going downhill. So I've put the ball to the right and instinctively, and, and obviously we know this through radar technology and so forth, instinctively you also know what's going to happen to the path and so forth. So instinctively I've opened the face a little bit. So, you know, the, the angle of attack was pretty steep onto the ball, open face. But because we were going downhill, it felt the right shot to play anyway. So I got some good height and obviously yeah. the ball stopped pretty quick. But those changes I made, I didn't really think, oh, downhill, let's put the ball right. And oh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ball right, let's open the face. It sort of felt right. Probably because of years of playing on hilly courses and so forth, you automatically know how to do it. I think that's probably the most important thing is make sure you try these things out, right? Exactly. And most amateurs, I think... Most amateurs in these situations, they don't really read the lie, they don't really read the situation, they just go ahead and grip the club normally and don't make these little adjustments. And for us, I think, and, and the top players in the world, they, they make these adjustments more instinctively, right? So the more you train it, the more you practice it, the better you'll become at it. Yes. Okay, so my ball's now underneath the hole. A little bit short of the flag, but from the distance I was for my second shot, I'm really happy here. So my putt's gonna go up the hill, a little bit right to left. And really, I don't wanna be too aggressive because if I go past the hole here, I'm gonna really leave myself with a tricky left to right downhill putt. So I really wanna really focus here on my, uh, on my distance control. Let's go ahead and give it a go here. So nice chance for an eagle. Well, you left an eagle put shorty in cardinal sin. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with that. It's, it's not close enough to be, uh, to be a definite birdie chance, but it's not too long. Quite a bit of break on this though. And uh, Ian's not too far away for, uh, for his birdie chance and I don't want him beating me, so I better give this a go. Oh, there we go in. Look at my birdie. Now you're under pressure. <coughs> it's going to take me about eight takes to do this. What, what? 
Do you want me to Ian's do? just gone near the hole. Is that allowed Shut under the rules of golf, everybody? <laughs> I've got a hole this now, you twice. <laughs> okay, so Paul's made a, a good four, seven iron, seven iron sand wedge, and I've hit driver, driver four iron here, and now I'm feeling a little bit of pressure, so. As, as well you should, Ian, those right to left putts, they're not easy for you. <laughs> exactly. So, focusing on the line I'm going to start it on. Oh, pot Ian, well done. A match your so birdie. So with halving birdies, well done Ian. But isn't that interesting? Two completely different ways to play the hole. Ian's gone for it with a driver, hit the green in two, had a really long putt for eagle, and obviously could have made that eagle putt, which I would obviously never have done from 88 metres away. But for me, I'm going to do that again because I felt no pressure the whole time. Hit yep. 7979 sand iron to get on the green. And I actually thought I would have had to hit three six irons or three five irons and in actual fact I played the hole so easily and there was no way I was ever going to make a bogey or anything like that from the way I did it. Yeah and I think that's a big tip for for you viewers out there that just because it's a par five you don't need to hit a driver or if it's a really long par five where you maybe can't reach the green in two then get the ball in play hit the ball up there to to the scoring area and then take your chances with a pitch and a putt. Yeah, I mean, for, for sure, I'll de be definitely doing this again, even though it's a hole I could probably reach into if I tried, but I'd, I'd just feel too much pressure from the tee, so have a go at that. Go and play your golf course and hit some irons from the tee and, and find out how difficult it really is. Obviously, distance is a premium, but I think we've shown today that getting the ball in play is just a sort of a premium as well. Exactly. 